As you may be well aware at this point, legendary mangaka Akira Toriyama passed away on March 1st, 2024, at the age of 68. He's the creator of Dragon Ball, Dr. Slump, the character designer for Chrono Trigger and Dragon Quest, and it cannot be overstated of just how influential and inspirational his work has been to so many people around the world. And if you know, if you've been following me on social media and even here on YouTube, I've mentioned how Akira Toriyama has been, or his work specifically, uh, especially Dragon Ball, has been a big part of my life, uh, being one of the earliest shows that I got exposure to. One of the first names of a character I I just re like remembered um, was Piccolo. The That was like a standout name. And you know that even though in the recent years um, before his passing, I mentioned that I've kind of grown distant from his work. I mean, I still appreciated his art, but I definitely grew a bit distant. But after his passing, I've gone to rekindle my relationship with his work. But yeah, his passing was deeply impactful to me. More impactful than I ever thought it would. Just because he was such a legendary, iconic figure. And his art style is just so iconic. And has probably subconsciously at least been an inspiration to my own art style. To my own works of art and might be coming more inspirational than I would like as my own work is I, I feel starting to look a little too similar to his but that aside that's not the point of this video this point this video is not about his passing or how it's affected me but I didn't want to mention that because again I think we're even a month after his passing we're still we're still reeling in that loss and we're going to be feeling this grief for a long time but that said by the time this video hopefully comes out it would have been akira toriyama's 69th birthday as he was born on april 5th 1955 so considering this is a prominently tokusatsu centric channel i figured to celebrate the life of Akira Toriyama, I would go ahead and talk about sort of how tokusatsu and Akira Toriyama's works have been so interconnected with one another. And I just go over through a lot of the references and inspirations that tokusatsu had on Akira Toriyama's life, and then I will go over some of maybe possible inspirations Akira Toriyama had on Tokusatsu itself, sort of a full cycle thing. Because when Akira Toriyama passed, I decided to dig out Manga Theater, which is a collection of one-shots that he did throughout the years. And it was a Christmas present that I got the year before, so I didn't like go out and get it afterwards, but I did I was reading that and then I read Dr. Slump for the first time, which very, very humorous manga. In fact, what you'll be seeing on screen for most of the time is a speed paint of my Aureli X Mario crossover painting. You know, a very silly painting, but something I wanted to feel very invocative of Dr. Slump's, you know, gag humor as a little homage, so to say. And before we get into more Dr. Slump, which we will, I think it's important that we start off with Akira Toriyama's obviously most influential work around the world, which is Dragon Ball. Now, I don't think it's a secret that Tokusatsu has had its impact on Dragon Ball. While Kung Fu movies are the main inspiration behind Dragon Ball, there's a lot of tokusatsu and kaiju elements in Dragon Ball. Well, I mean, there's only a few, but here's 
A few quick examples. I think one of the most impactful inspirations to Dragon Ball is the capsules. The same capsules that are created by the Capsule Corporation, which is run by Bulma's family. The whole concept was inspired by Ultra 7's Capsule Monsters. But speaking of Ultra 7, the character Chi Chi, who would later marry Goku, the first time we see her as a kid, she wears a helmet that is strikingly similar to Ultra 7 and shares the same attacks, including the Eye Slugger and the Emerium Beam. Even earlier than that, we have an appearance by Baby Gamera, which is obviously Gamera, but smaller. Also, everybody knows about the Uzaru forms that Goku and the Saiyans can transform into when they see a full moon. But, did you know that Uzaru was inspired by Goro from Ultra Q as well as King Kong? And sticking with the Kaiju route, we do have cameos from Toho Kaiju either in the background or sometimes in the foreground. Just uh, more for gag usage, though. The character Oolong as you might not know, has the ability to shapeshift. And when he transforms, he does have a time limit of five minutes. And this time limit is inspired by Ultraman's time limit when he's transformed. And how do I know this part? Well, we'll put a little pin on that and we'll get back right onto it. But jumping from Dragon Ball to Dragon Ball Z, the Ginyu Force obviously is parroting the Sentai teams with uh, different members have, representing different colors and their insane pose, choreography. Yeah, it's a complete parody. Then we have the Great Saiyan Man, which is an inspiration, or I'm sorry, inspired by Kamen Rider. And I believe somebody pointed this out on Twitter. I'm too lazy to look, unfortunately. Um, that one of the phrases that Gohan was trying to you know use for a great Saiyan man was inspired by Kamen Rider Stronger. Then going into more of the Super Era, the character Jocko, who appears in Dragon Ball Z Resurrection F, and later on Dragon Ball Super, is obviously inspired by Ultraman, and being sort of this intergalactic police officer and just design wise is inspired by Ultraman. Now Goku Black's name is inspired by Kamen Rider Black but not the character um, because Kamen Rider Black is not an evil Kamen Rider but Goku Black as a character is also inspired by other tokusatsu elements which are the fake ultras and writers that appear throughout the series. And then Finally, I will talk about Dragon Ball Superhero, which makes a couple of tokusatsu references from what I'm aware of. I haven't seen the movie yet, but I do know that Gamma 1 and Gamma 2 are inspired by both Ultra 7 and Ultraman Zero respectively, and as well as Ichigo and Nigo. And I know there's probably much, much more tokusatsu references in the Dragon Ball series. I can't mention them all here. Because I'm currently rereading, I'm sorry, reading the manga for the first time, and I will be rewatching the anime. So I, it's been a while, and like I said, there's probably many inspirations and references that I have missed. But I do want to jump from Dragon Ball all the way to Doctor Slump, because if you thought Dragon Ball was very blatant with their, with its inspiration of tokusatsu then you haven't read dr slump or haven't even watched dr slump because dr slump's tokusatsu references beat out dragon balls by a mile in fact there's literally too many to count i cannot list every single reference in doc uh every tokusatsu reference in tokus wow i'm messing this up one more time i cannot count how many tokusatsu references are in Dr. Slump? Um, but let's go through some of the big ones. Uh, I mean, we get regular appearances from the Ultras and different kaiju. In fact, the very opening of the anime 
show, not the anime opening, but I mean the first episode of the anime, um, we have Ultraman fishing out the sun from the ocean. And that's the very first episode. And there's more Ultraman appearances in the manga and probably in the anime. Mind you, I haven't watched the anime, but I did read the manga. Gamera, especially, is, you know, in the center of a couple of gags. Uh, one being, you know, this panel where Manila asks if Gamera is his dad. <laughs> and Gamera's like, I'm not Godzilla. I'm... No, it's like, I'm not your dad. I'm Gamera. <laughs> And there's a little, you know, point jabs at the whole friend to all children. Um, I'll, also, apologies, this is not going to be a very well edited video. But I do really, I think this part, you know, Dr. Slump being a little gag comedy humor, I think it allows some mistakes to be put in. But anyway, there is even more references than just the ultras and kaijus themselves like just blatantly being in the manga and I, I couldn't forget by the way Godzilla is also in the manga but he's also named uh, Mr. Toho being one of the high school teachers in Penguin Village but there are also many references to Ultraman made by the characters and the most blatant one I think is the SSSP uniform being worn by Aureli and is seen in one of the anime openings. You know, that's like one of Aureli's iconic outfits is the SSSP uniform. I think that's hilarious. Um, there's even a part of the village that's called Angurus Apartments. And the building is the SSSP bill like headquarters. And I don't want to like again I can't list all the references in of Tokusatsu and Dr. Slump but I think this big one is Gachan which is a main character in the series and follows Aurelia along and would later become the Gachans are actually named after Godzilla and Gamera being a combination of the two names because the they they're not just called Gachans, their real names are or the names that are given by Aureli are Gajira, which combines the Ga from Gamera and the Jira from Gojira, which I think is cool. And the manga pronounces it a couple different ways, or it's translated in a couple different ways. Um, but yeah, we're gonna move away from Dr. Slump though. And we're going to get to other manga. The one shots that I've read and Akira Toriyama's manga theater. Now I'm going to break this up into sort of three sections. Uh, not major ones, but we're going to talk about Akira Toriyama's earlier manga. Then we're going to go through the post Dr. Sump debut. And then finally the post Dragon Ball debut. But... Uh, there's not much because, again, it's been not a while, but it's not super fresh in my memory. I'm going to probably skip um, through a lot of the one-shots. I'm just going through the ones that stuck out through my mind. Um, but in the earlier manga, literally in Akira Toriyama's second published one-shot, Wonder Island 2, which, by the way, this was before Akira Toriyama became a household name, uh, and his... One shot mangas Wonder Island 1 and 2 were not well received by Shonen Jump readers, but I Wonder Island 2 sticks out here because a lot of the gags are about Ultraman and Godzilla. Um, in fact, the opening gag I should say is about the police chief. You, and his police officers recreating a fight between Ultraman and Garamond. As one of the officers looks like Garamond. And even the chief is Ultraman. And the other officer is just off to the side helping the chief. He first, he first pops up singing the Ultraman theme. Which I love. And then... 
he picks up, you know, um, the chief, you know, so the chief can, you know, fly like Ultraman. And the chief makes a lot of Ultraman sounds like Shwatch, you know, and all that. Yeah, and there's, and again, with Godzilla Kaiju, there's characters turning into Godzilla. The police officer that looks like Garamon turns into Garamon. Um, Baragon shows up in the manga at the end. And even King Ghidorah makes an appearance in the manga. It's a wild one shot. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to say like Akira Toriyama's love for Tokusatsu has been in his work since the very early days. And it shows that this man really loved Tokusatsu. In another early manga, the one actually being responsible for giving Akira Toriyama the opportunity to create Dr. Slump, which is Tomato the Cutesy Gumshoe, there is a gag where Tomato uses the police radio in the car as a karaoke machine to sing, you guess it, the Ultraman theme. And we are going to have to jump back to Dr. Slump real quick because this gag and also the gag, like the characters from Wonder Island 2, the police officers, they actually make appearances in Dr. Slump. I, I'm sorry, I'm kind of jumping all over the place, but the police officers, they actually are become characters in Dr. Slump and the gag of Tomato sing, using the police radio to sing the Ultraman theme actually is reused and extended in Dr. Slump but instead of a police officer you doing it um it's one of the it's the villagers you know it's it's very funny I love it after Dr. Slump's debut and right before Dragon Ball in fact this is one of the prototypes of Dragon Ball the one shots Dragon Boy makes a direct reference to Ultraman and as one of the characters is a yokai that transforms going you know, shape shifts but the reference comes when the shapeshifter mentions that he has a time limit like ultraman and considering this is a prototype to dragon ball that's why i mentioned oolong's time limit it's you got to put two and two together that yeah oolong's time limit was inspired by ultraman's time limit and finally i want to go into the post dragon ball era with a one-shot series i'm sorry not a one-shot but a mini series that akira toriyama created which is cash man and that is basically toriyama's henshin hero parody and the hero is a kind of this mixture of common rider and ultraman but leans more into the Ultraman side, especially given how the story starts with the character Cashman fighting aliens in space, but has to make a crash landing on Earth. But during his crash landing, he accidentally kills a human and he has to fuse with the human. He, he uh, is disguised as the human until he can save enough money to fix his ship and go back into space but yeah you know this is basically a parody of Ultraman's debut when he crashes into Hayata and has to fuse with Hayata and of course uh, the human that Cashman crashes into while not being a defense agent he it is a police officer so he is still fighting evil in a sense but yeah you know it's just when you read Toriyama's work especially beyond just Dragon Ball you see just how much this man really loved Tokusatsu and how much Tokusatsu really inspired his own work but now that we've talked about Tokusatsu's influence on Toriyama's work let's talk about Toriyama's influence on Tokusatsu now unfortunately I haven't had much time to really research this and Google hasn't really provided me with a lot of resources in fact it's the two concrete examples that i have are from twitter which is, says something and the thing is it's like i am sure toriyama has influenced tokusatsu his work you know especially has influenced tokusatsu but a lot of these are going to be speculative 
And if you have concrete examples, please tell me in the comments below. I would really like to know. But yeah, if I, I wish I had the ability and resources to know for certain that Toriyama did influence these factors. But again, like I mentioned, most of these are speculative. But I will go over the two that are confirmed. On Twitter, actor Yasuhisa Furuhawa mentions that without Dragon Ball, which was my Bible, the go on red hairstyle would not have been possible. It was a dream of mine to have Akira Toriyama draw me. I pray that he may rest in peace. I also want to say that this translation was provided by Josh Knight the first over on Twitter. And then finally the second confirmed tokusatsu inspiration comes from very recently um literally the day before i'm recording this jared krajewski who is the designer of godzilla's new look and godzilla x kong did reveal that godzilla's transformation was inspired by goku's kaioken so yeah there is a direct Akira Toriyama influence to Godzilla's new look to the Godzilla series not exactly tokusatsu since you know this is a big Hollywood CGI movie but it is a tokusatsu series prominently still because you can't erase the 70 years of Godzilla's history but speaking of Godzilla there is one tidbit I wanted to say is that Akira Toriyama was actually an extra in 1984's Return of Godzilla. I'll try to post a picture up here. And yeah, those are the confirmed, you know, inspirations and influences that Akira Toriyama had on Tokusatsu that I can find. So I'm going to go over some of my own personal speculative, you know, thoughts. And they may be right, they may be wrong. Like I said, they're very speculative as I just do not have the resources to find Toriyama's influence directly. So, like I mentioned before, if you have definitive evidence, please let me know in the comments below. I don't think YouTube allows you to comment links, unfortunately, but at least let me know if the, any of these are wrong or if I'm on the right track. But yeah, here we go. Starting off with Ultraman Tiga, I believe that Tiga's glitter form is inspired by Super Saiyan. Obviously, Tiga going gold. You know, it, it feels very inspired by Super Saiyan's gold look, or yellow look, I should say. But also, still sticking with Ultraman Tiga, the finale of Ultraman Tiga has this moment where children around the Earth give Ultraman Tiga their energy to help defeat the final big bad and it can't help but feel that might have been inspired by Goku's spirit bomb attack against Kid Buu when he borrowed the energy from everyone around the earth. In fact I think uh, speaking in a more general sense I think the concept of final forms have been inspired by Super Saiyan. Now that's not to say that form changes have been anything new to Tokusatsu. In fact, form changes predate Dragon Ball, um, at least in Kamen Rider. But I think with Final Form specifically, uh, with the emotional weight that goes into a lot of these Final Form changes, I feel like that is indeed inspired by super saiyan because super saiyan itself was a very was meant to be a final form and it was very emotionally impacted and obviously super saiyan has its influence as still is seen today i think most recently gear 5 from one piece feels very inspired by super saiyan and speaking of something that has technically been a part of tokusatsu um but may have been popularized in Dragon Ball are beam clashes. Like I said, beam clashes aren't exactly new, but hear me out. There's something about Dragon Ball that made beam clashes just a thing. 
that made beam clashes like, ooh, these are cool, these are amazing. And I think that did impact at least um, the Heisei era of Godzilla and Ultraman. Or, well, we can even see beam clashes being a big part of Ultraman to this day, but especially in the Versus era of Godzilla, beam clashes were more prominent than they were in, say, Showa era. And I think the way that beam clashes have been cinematically shot at this point have been influenced by Dragon Ball's beam clashes and beam struggles. Because, yeah, it's like... And there's more emotion that's being put into these beam clashes than they were before Dragon Ball. So I do think the beam clashes in Dragon Ball did inspire later beam clashes that happened in Tokusatsu. Godzilla Final Wars, I there's a lot of inspiration from the Matrix and whatnot. But I do think with some of how crazy and how reliant on martial arts like combat there is in the movie that it, it feels very inspired by dragon ball z i mean especially if you look at the fight between the, i'm sorry i didn't look up final wars before this i should have but the exian leader and our protagonist our protagonist basically goes super saiyan in a way it it feels very inspired by dragon ball you know and they have a fight yeah um, but stepping away from Dragon Ball a bit, I do want to talk about Ultraman Xerath. If you don't know, Ultraman Xerath is a parody, an official parody by Subaraya that was created for the series' 30th anniversary. And the reason I bring up Ultraman Xerath is, again, I do not have any concrete evidence of this. But I do have a feeling that a lot of the gag humor that Ultraman Xerath in the movies use was inspired by Dr. Slump. I think Dr. Slump was very revolutionary for gag type gag type manga. And I think Ultraman Xerath is representative of sort of that influence of Dr. Slump had. And then finally, I think the aspect of like Gamera and the Heisei trilogy and this one's, I might, might be more of a stretch, but I think there is an aspect that it's like, okay, you know, that's possible. Is that um, Gamera becoming stronger after near-death experiences and borrowing energy from others, uh, specifically, you know, like as a children around the world in the Heisei trilogy, that feels very reminiscent of Dragon Ball and goku using both super saiyan and just how saiyans work you know having you know getting stronger after they get beaten or face near-death experiences or even straight up dying and coming back to life but yeah i th like i said there's probably a ton of toriyama influence that spread throughout tokusatsu that i'm just missing but it, these are the ones that i again I think are possible inspirations that come up to my mind. But yeah, I did want to make this video because I ultimately this video is about a celebration of Akira Toriyama's life. His life as a very humbling artist and a very funny person when you actually get to read some of his like gag humor type comics. But overall, it's a celebration of a fellow Tokusatsu fan. And I do think that Akira Toriyama's love for Tokusatsu is what helped kept the spirit alive for a lot of these franchises. Because when the thing is, is two popular series, Dr. Slump and Dragon Ball, they came out in the 80s. That was the period when Tokusatsu was at its worst because really it was Sentai and Metal Hero that was carrying the flagpole. Kamen Rider had briefly come back for Kamen Rider Black but and Black RX but that was dormant for most of the 80s Ultraman there was no Tokusatsu productions after Ultraman 80 until the 90s Godzilla was on hiatus only having two movies you know in the 80s which was Return of Godzilla in 1984 and Godzilla vs. Biollante 
and obviously Gamera after Super Monster. Well, we don't talk about Gamera Super Monster on this channel. Anyways, need I say more? Tokusatsu was in a very bad spot in the 80s, but I think Toriyama's love and the way that he injected Tokusatsu into his work kept the spirit of Tokusatsu alive for younger generations. For that generation specifically, that wasn't getting new tokusatsu material outside of sentai so i think it and going even internationally i think you know injecting the tokusatsu wouldn't be as popular or well known if dragon ball didn't make its way internationally and became such a phenomenon that it is it wouldn't allow people to ask what the hell's a baby camera what a flying turtle what the hell i gotta learn more about this or just learning about same it's like wait same man's inspired by a japanese superhero named common rider hey this common rider fellow looks cool i mean these are obviously hypothetical situations but i'm sure someone had decided to look those up and ended up becoming a tokusatsu fan because of dragon ball i'm confident that happened but yeah for Akira Toriyama's birthday I really want to appreciate his love for tokusatsu and I just wanted to say thank you take care and shoe watch